If you had landed on Earth a really, really long time ago, about 1.5 billion years in the past, you wouldn't have recognized our planet. At that time, all the land was stuck together in one giant supercontinent called Nuna, which was surrounded by an endless ocean. But if you had stuck around, you would have witnessed a planetary-scale disaster, Nuna falling apart. But the most amazing thing is that apparently, when Nuna started breaking apart, it kicked off changes that made Earth a much better place for life. Scientists used to call this part of Earth's history the Boring Billion. It lasted from about 1.8 billion to 800 million years ago. Not much seemed to happen during that time, hence the name. No big climate changes, no bizarre life forms, and nothing very dramatic. Turns out the name isn't very fair. Things may have looked calm on the surface, but underneath, Earth was changing a lot. Continents were moving, splitting apart and coming back together. Two massive supercontinents, Nuna and later Rodinia, formed and broke up during this time. When Nuna began to break apart, huge cracks opened between the drifting land pieces. Water filled those spaces, creating shallow seas. Those seas were warmer, calmer, and had more oxygen than the deep oceans that existed before. And that might have changed everything. The new seas created friendlier conditions for life to grow and change. Scientists now think they may have helped early life become more complex. They looked back 1.8 billion years and rebuilt how Earth's tectonic plates moved over time. Plus, they tracked how carbon was stored inside the planet and released into the air. The researchers did this using a new advanced computer model that gave way more detail than they had ever had before. They found out that during the 350 million years of the so-called Boring Billion, the amount of shallow seas along the edges of continents doubled. Altogether, these coastlines stretched about 81,000 miles. That's more than three times around Earth at the equator. At the same time, subduction zones, places where one tectonic plate slides under another, actually got shorter as the continents shifted around. This is important because subduction zones are where a lot of volcanoes come from. When one plate sinks under another, seawater gets dragged deep into the Earth. That water helps rocks melt, creating magma. The magma rises, erupts as volcanoes, and releases gases like carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So when there were fewer subduction zones, there were fewer volcanoes, and less carbon dioxide was pumped into the air. It went like this. The supercontinent Nuna broke apart, and it created lots of brand new ocean floors in young seas that didn't exist before. These new ocean floors pulled carbon dioxide out of the air. Seawater flowed into cracks in the ocean floor. When that happened, carbon got trapped in rocks, forming limestone. Over time, this process locked carbon away inside Earth instead of letting it stay in the atmosphere. With less carbon dioxide, Earth slowly cooled down. That cooler climate helped the new shallow seas become stable and rich in oxygen. Such calm, oxygen-filled environments are perfect for life to become more complex. Those huge shallow seas near the continents acted like safe nurseries for early life. They may have helped eukaryotes evolve faster. Eukaryotes are living things with complex cells. Cells that have parts inside them, like a nucleus that holds DNA. Every animal, plant, and fungus on Earth comes from these kinds of cells. So when eukaryotes appeared, it was a huge moment in the history of life. Scientists already knew that eukaryotes showed up during the Boring Billion because of fossils that are about 1 billion years old, but they didn't really know why this happened at that time. Now scientists want to find better preserved early eukaryote fossils to learn exactly how complex life first evolved. Life on Earth started over 3 billion years ago. It began with tiny, simple microbes and slowly turned into a huge variety of living things. We still don't have a clear answer about how living things came out of that early primordial soup, but even though there's no final answer yet, scientists have come up with several theories to try to explain how life on Earth may have started. Some scientists think lightning helped start life on Earth. 
The idea is pretty simple. Lightning is a powerful spark, and sparks can cause chemical reactions. In a famous experiment from 1952, scientists showed that electric sparks could turn simple gases like water vapor and methane into amino acids and sugars, which are basic building blocks of life. This suggested that lightning in early Earth storms might have helped create the first life ingredients. But later research showed Earth's early air wasn't exactly like the experiment. Still, some scientists think volcanic clouds could have had the right gases and lots of lightning, making this process possible. Other experts think life may have started on clay. One researcher suggested that tiny clay crystals could grow and stick together in patterns. As they did, they could trap simple molecules and line them up in organized ways. Think of clay as a kind of early organizer. Today, DNA tells molecules how to line up and work together. But what if clay had been doing a similar job before DNA even existed? It could be helping molecules arrange themselves until they eventually learned to organize on their own. This idea was interesting and got a lot of attention, but most scientists don't fully accept it yet. Another popular theory is that life started at deep sea vents on the ocean floor. These vents are cracks in Earth's crust where super hot water shoots out from deep inside the planet. As the water rises, it picks up important chemicals like carbon and hydrogen, which are key ingredients for life. The vents are full of tiny rock spaces where these chemicals could collect, mix, and react. The rocks may have helped speed up these reactions. Even today, deep sea vents house rich ecosystems, even though it's dark there and the whole environment is kinda extreme. Scientists are still studying this idea. In 2019, Researchers even created early life-like structures in lab conditions similar to these vents. Such an experiment showed that this theory could really work. Another idea is that life may have started under ice. Scientists believe Earth's oceans might have been covered in ice around 3 billion years ago. Sounds pretty severe, right? But the cold may have actually helped life get started. Many of the chemical building blocks of life, like simple amino acids, are more stable at low temperatures. In warmer water, these molecules break down quickly and are spread far apart. But when water freezes, it pushes those molecules together, increasing their concentration. This crowding makes chemical reactions more likely. So, let's say the molecules were packed closer together and were breaking down more slowly. In this case, they had more chances to link up and form more complex structures. Ice may have also acted like a protective blanket. It could shield the water from harmful ultraviolet radiation from the sun and from damage caused by meteor impacts. Another idea is that life didn't start on Earth at all. This theory is called panspermia, and it suggests that life came from space. Scientists know that big asteroid impacts can blast rocks off of planets. For example, rocks from Mars have been knocked into space before, and some of them ended up on Earth. Some researchers think tiny microbes might have survived inside space rocks during the journey. If that's true, life here could have started thanks to visitors from Mars, or some other cosmic world. Others go even further and suggest that life could have traveled on comets or space dust from completely different star systems, hitching a ride across the galaxy. At the same time, even if panspermia is real, it doesn't fully solve the mystery. It just moves the question somewhere else. Instead of asking how life began on Earth, we'd need to ask, how did life begin anywhere in the universe? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.